In this lecture, we will discuss preliminary data analysis using continuous data. Let's look at the agenda. In terms of the agenda, we will go over numerical summaries. We will discuss measures of location, such as mean, median, and mode. We will then discuss measures of spread, such as range, interquartile range, variance, and standard deviation. Finally, we will discuss how to detect outliers. Let's start with an example. This data represents a sample of 50 cereal boxes. One of the critical to quality characteristics in this case is weight. The cereal boxes should weigh exactly 16 ounces. Do you think that they all will? Shouldn't we have some way to summarize that data that is simple and more compact? What is actually happening with the process? Let's use this example to show how to use the numerical summaries. Let's start with measures of location. Measures of location answer the following questions. What value is typical? Where is the center of the data? Where is the data located? The three measures of location we are going to look at are the mean, median, and mode. Let's look at how to calculate these things. The mean, or average, as it is often called, is just the sum of the data divided by the number of data points. The median is the middlemost observation if there is an odd number of observations, or the average of the middle two if there is an even number of data points. The mode is just the most frequent observation. Let's do some practice. Here's a chance for you to give it a try. Stop the video and try these problems. See if you can calculate the mean, the median, and the mode for each of the data sets. The answer for line one, the mean is 13, the median is 13, and there is no mode. The NA is just an indicator that there is no mode. The answer is for line two, the mean is 10.9, the median is 11, and the mode is actually two values. One is nine and one is 12. And finally, the answers for line three are that the mean is 58.6, the median is 57.5, and the mode is 57. Let's look at the situation to help shed some light on what we should use when. Where would you rather work? For a company where the average wage is 25,000 or where the average wage is 35,000? Well, here are two such companies. In reality, we are likely to earn about the same salary regardless of which company we work for unless you are one of the two bosses in company B. So the question now becomes what measure of location is best to use? So for measures of location, we will report the median if there is skew in the data or potential outliers. Otherwise, we will report the mean. Let's take a look at measures of spread or variability in the data. The measure we will talk about are the range, variance, standard deviation, and interquartile range, which you'll sometimes hear referred to as IQR. Let's start with the range. The range is the maximum minus the minimum value. So if you have a data set like the data set in the slide, you just order the data set, take a look at the lowest number and the highest number. In this case, the highest is 9, the lowest is 3. Subtract them from each other and you will end up with a range of 6. Give it a try for these other data sets. Do you notice anything about the range as a measure of variability? You should have gotten the answers to be 29 minus 21 equals 6 and 96 minus 21 equals 75. What do you notice here? Well, when we changed one number from the first sample to the second, the range blew up. This shows that the range is really only representative of the data when the sample size is small. Now let's take a look at the variance. Previously we saw that the range only uses two data points. The variance and standard deviation use all of the data. The variance is just the average squared distance of each point from the overall mean. If we are calculating the sample standard deviation, which is what we do typically, then we divide by n minus 1 rather than n when we calculate the average squared deviation. The standard deviation is just the square root of the variance. The calculations are shown in detail on the slide. The formula we saw on the previous slide was the theoretical formula for the standard deviation. This formula, which is algebraically equivalent, is sometimes called the computational formula. It requires you to calculate two quantities and then plug them into the formula. Now, how do we know if we should use the variance or standard deviation? In most cases, we lean towards the standard deviation. This is for two reasons. It usually makes more sense in the situation. If we were measuring length in centimeters, it doesn't make much sense to report a variance of 4 centimeters squared it makes much more sense to report a standard deviation of two centimeters. Number two, the units on the standard deviation are the same as the units on the mean. So in the same situation, 
we can report say that our product has an average length of 10 centimeters with a standard deviation of two centimeters. So let's assume we have either skew or outliers. We showed earlier that it didn't make much sense to report a mean and the same holds for standard deviations. So in a typical situation like this, we wouldn't want to report the range either because it doesn't use all of the data. So what are we going to do in this case? So in this case, we will use something called the interquartile range or IQR for short. The IQR is an alternative to the range. It takes into account a much larger portion of the data than the range does. It is a number based on the data quartiles. Let's discuss what these are. The quartiles are determined in the same manner as the median. In fact, Q1, or the first quartile, is calculated exactly like the median, except it only uses the first 25% of the data. The third quartile, or Q3, is also calculated in the same manner, but it utilizes the last 25% of the data. This is why they are considered the quartiles. To find the IQR, we subtract the first quartile from the third, or IQR equals Q3 minus Q1. So what we're going to do here is report the IQR if the data shows skew or has outliers present. Otherwise, we will report the standard deviation. Now let's put it all together. So when completing a preliminary analysis, you want to report a measure of location and a measure of spread. If the data contains outliers or shows skew, we report the median and IQR. Otherwise, we report the mean and standard deviation. Now we have talked about outliers throughout this presentation, but we haven't defined what they are or how to find them. Let's do that now. An outlier is a point that is too extreme from the rest of the data to be considered occurring by chance. We checked for both outliers and extreme outliers. An outlier is more than 1.5 times the IQR from the nearest quartile. An extreme outlier is more than three times the IQR away from the nearest quartile. Let's check this for the serial weights. Here we have the calculations that we need to find the interval that we need to check for outliers. Since both 15.7 and 16.7 is within the interval of 15.5 to 17.1, none of the points are outliers. Now let's check for extreme outliers. So now we know that based on the calculations, if there are no regular outliers, then there are no extreme outliers. Let's go through the motions anyways. Since both 15.7 and 16.7 are within the interval 14.9 and 17.7, none of the points are extreme outliers. Now let's go back to the serial weights. Since we saw that the distribution was symmetric, and since we just showed there are no outliers, we can report the mean and standard deviation of the serial box weights. The mean is 16.274 ounces, and the standard deviation is 0.246 ounces. So, is the requirement that the target weight should be 16 ounces met? Officially, it seems not, but making sure that all the bottles are 16 ounces exactly seems like an impossible task. This is where numerical summaries fall short. We can only assess what is happening with this snapshot of the process. So, it is a good start, but we need to go further. Here is a final example where we will put it all together. This example will be done in a separate video. Please view the video called Preliminary Analysis Continuous Data Example.